Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, I have something pretty awesome to share with you. We're working on our game project here. And as you can see, what are these strange things floating in the sky? Well, today we're working on building our level. So the idea is that when the game begins, we're going to have a camera in the sky, something similar to, say, this. And we're going to see our game board here, and it's going to have these default tiles and there'll be different colors and things based upon the different rooms that it's chosen. And the decorations are actually going to fall from the sky. So let me give you a quick demonstration. So this is what's going to happen. So the board is going to build itself. Everything's just going to slam into place. Isn't that awesome? Everything falls, they bounce, and they settle. And right now all we have are some walls. So we have these corner pieces. We have the straight pieces. And then I made this really quick and dirty table and just a little box to represent another decoration on top of the table. And the idea is that we will watch all of these. Oh, and I have these little tower things. And the idea is that we're gonna watch each of these fall and slam into place. So let me show you that one more time. So I'm gonna hit play, and then let's watch them all come into existence here. Boom, 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 everything settles. Now, as you may have noticed, uh, this is not perfect yet, but I'm working on it, and if anybody out there is a Unreal Physics guru, please let me know. Uh, as you can see, sometimes the walls don't quite settle very well. You can see here, these did not settle quite well. Let's see, are there any broken over here? Uh, not too bad, we'll see that corner piece got a little messed up, but it's sort of a 50-50. I'll run the simulation once and this happens, I'll run it again and everything is perfectly fine. So I'm still working out the kinks, but the idea is pretty awesome. So I wanted to share with you how this works. So obviously we need some physics objects and I have an example here. Let me bring up my example and I'll show it to you and then we will go ahead and build one together, okay? So this is my, I called this BP drop. So this is uh, the first mission, mission one, and this is zone one. So the board is a series of zones. So let me show you here. So zone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. And the idea is that each board you choose, it will pick a mission. And that mission is a two zones are predetermined because that will be your starting zone and it will be your objective zone. And then the other zones are randomized or semi-randomized amongst different tile sets. So we have these already kind of preset a little bit. So here we go to our drop zone one and here are the objects involved in that. And you'll notice that this little circle here, this little sphere, represents our center. And you'll notice that they're at different heights even. And that's to accentuate this drop and dro drop and settle kind of feature that we have going on here. And each of these objects here is just a different static mesh that's been added to this. And we're just reusing from you know our, our tile set here. So we have the corners and the straight pieces there, straight walls. Now these have all been designed so that they sit directly on a tile. Let me show you an example. So we come down here. These are our starting positions for each of our players, one, two, three, and four. And you can see that they fill up an entire tile on the board here. And if I just bring an example of one of these into the world, let me grab the corner piece. Let's see here. There's our single wall, and here's our corner. So I'm gonna bring our corner piece into the world. And you can see what he looks like. And the walls themselves actually straddle the line of our tile here. So if I put him at zero, zero, you'll see he's right in the middle, but he has to go on a tile. He can't go at a cross section like this. So let me put him at 90, 90, and there you go. So now he's encapsulating player four. So you can see the line goes right down the middle here. So he's right there on the line. So this, this piece actually sits right in the center of this square. So that's how all of our pieces work. And then the next piece, if we had a straight piece, so let's bring one of those in right here click so he would be 90 to 70 there you go so he, he snaps right in there so that's how all the pieces work and that's how we've built all of our different uh, sections here and what I did was I made the first section and then I just copied and you can see each of those spheres there represents the center of that zone and then we rearrange them a little bit make them slightly different heights even you can see the pillars here are arranged so that they'll fall in kind of an order and then the higher the things are from each other that, that's the order in which they'll drop, and you can add a little bit of drama to this by having you know, this table a little bit higher than this table, and so the whole world just kind of 
boom, 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 just kind of settles together, and it's a really neat effect, especially from above like this. I've done a couple tests with a camera up here, and you just see the whole level sort of assemble itself, and it's really awesome. See, here's my even platform, so I was standing here, and I would jump off and onto the board to, to watch it happen live, and it's really cool. So let's uh, take a look and kind of deconstruct this example a little bit, and then we'll build one together. Okay, so each of these pieces, obviously we need the physics set. We're going to simulate physics. That's that's a given because this thing has to fall from the sky. And we put the, the whole position of this whole default root. See, I didn't even touch this. Default root, and then the way I added each of these is you just select here and say add component. And then I say static mesh. There you go. Now, it has pre-selected this wall a single because I have that selected in the content browser. But if you don't have anything selected yet, it'll just say static mesh. So I add that and then a new one will pop up. Let's go ahead and just add one of these. And there you go. See? So he appears at zero zero. So you can see here zero 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 to this section here. And then I just gave it a little bit of an offset height. So say I want this one to fall last, so we'd move them up here. And then I would build out more walls based upon this. So let me see if I can add one to this. So we'll move him He's not going to, uh, it's not going to look quite right, but let's move him over here and I just want, don't want him to interfere with the, the rest of this. So we'll just put him here for now and then we'll make another one. So I'm going to do control W. Now the problem is you notice this is a child of this wall. So he's kind of way off set up here. So the two ways you can go about doing this. What I tried to do is make sure that every single static mesh piece here and you should name them. It's a little difficult when you have something like this, like what do you call this, corner 1A, you know, but you really should name them as much, well as you can. Now the two ways is you can make sure everything is a child of the default root, or I've noticed that if you make them children of one piece, so say I make this one and then I make each of these a child of that, they tend to stay together a little bit better in my experience. I don't know that for, you know, a fact, I can't say that's totally true just from what I've experienced. So that's again a question for the community. If you guys know better than I do, this is how it works, then let's figure that out together. But what you can do is if you do want these to be sort of uh, together and a little bit more organized. So now this guy, all we have to do is reset his position. So if I zero that out, he'll be right on top of him. And now when you're making a wall, this is a pretty neat trick if I bring this over here and set him there. So his position now is 0, negative 180, 0, because these are 180 by 180 by, they're a little taller than that for decoration purposes. Now watch what happens if I just make another duplicate, Control W. Now he automatically gets set kind of, he will continue this line automatically. And the reason is he's now a child of a child of this guy. You see how that chain is working here? One, two, three. And because I made a duplicate, what I said was make a duplicate of this object. So it automatically made it a child. And then his position hasn't changed. So he has offset 180 minus on the Y from its parent. So the wall kind of continues. So that's a pretty neat thing you can do too. So now this is going to really screw up our, our wall here and it's going to act funky, but let's go ahead and compile and save. And let's watch the example again. I'm going to make some more room here so that we can see it. Uh, let's do the full presentation mode so we get the, the biggest viewing angle we can. Okay, so let's run the simulation and we'll look over here. We should see our walls. Aha, we do not see them. And why do we not see them? Because they should have fallen like everything else, but I think because we added them, we didn't give them the right settings. So let's take a look. Yep, they're not simulating physics, see? So when I set up the first one here, we're just making copies. And so it copied all of the statistics here, all of the settings, but these don't have any settings. So these will just stay in the sky. Okay. They're not going to move like the rest of these. So we need to give them physics too. So let's take a look. Our settings here <clears throat> under physics are simulate physics. Okay. So we'll check that box for each of these guys. There we go. And then for our wall here, you'll notice that I checked the box here to give it an actual mass of the body and I gave it a big number. This is 2750. So I did a lot of experimenting with this. So this is kind of a number that I found that works best for this situation. Now I in no way am, you know, saying that these are correct numbers based upon 
what the mass of a stone wall of this size would be or any of that kind of thing. I just played with the numbers until I liked the result and the result ended up being pretty good. So, so let's take a look. Then our linear damping, dampening, pardon me, is set to 0.5 and our angular dampening is set to zero. So let's take a look at this. So see, it starts at 0.1. So we really got to up that. I found that they fall better if we do 0.5. Okay. Now you'll notice that <clears throat> The key to this trick here is that we need to make sure that these fall only vertically and then they stack and kind of settle only vertically. And the way we accomplish that is here with the constraints. So what I'm doing is I'm locking the constraints on all three axes, which means it cannot rotate at all. And then I'm locking the position on the X and Y. Now let's take a look and see what happens if we, I'm going to save this. We'll lock the rotation uh, on one of them and we won't do that on the other two. So let's see what happens now. So now they should fall. So they'll be over here as part of this. And look at this, oh look, look at this mess. <laughs> that one even fell to the floor. So you'll see that they they rotated, they fell all over the place and they that, that doesn't look right, right? That's not what we want for our decorations. So let's go back here and that's why we, we lock all of this. So we're gonna lock all three of these and we're gonna lock on the X and Y for the position. That means you can only move on the z-axis. That's all you're allowed to move. Now this still won't look quite right because it's going to interfere with our existing walls, but it shouldn't look as strange. So let's take a look over here. There you go. See? See? He st got stopped by that wall and he was just stopped right there. And that's all he was able to do because he's only allowed to move up and down. So that's the trick is how we got everything else to kind of settle. So let's take a look at our example here. So as I created, uh, now to create one of these, this is just a blueprint. So let me go through the steps for you. So we just right click and say blueprint and I choose actor and say BP example. Okay, and I'm gonna open that guy up. He's on the other screen, pardon me. So here he is, right, default scene root and then we're gonna add a static mesh. So I just click here, add component, static mesh. And let's call this wall, okay. Now over here in the static mesh, it wants to know what kind of static mesh do we want. So let's do my wall here, which is, there he is, very good. So that's all he is right there. So now quickly we'll do the settings again. So it's 2750 and this is 0.5, zero, and we'll lock the position and lock the rotation. And let's say compile, save, okay. So now that's it, look at how quick and easy that was. So let's go back to the world here and we're gonna drop an example here just so that we can see it literally drop an example. So let's find our example piece, PP example, and I'll put him right here. Now we don't want him to just start there because obviously he won't fall and it won't be interesting. So let's scale back here and you'll see how high up I put these things. These are up in the 3000s-ish. So I'm gonna put it even higher so that he'll fall a little later. So we have some time to kind of look around and see it happen, okay? Let's bring this down here. Actually, it won't matter because we're gonna get close. And let's just do this again. So F11, Alt P, and here he comes. Let's get the dice out of the way. Boom. Look at that. He bounces and settles, and there he is. And you'll notice that now he's acting like a part of the level. I can't go through him. He has his proper collision. Now, the one thing I've noticed is I should re-import these objects and just give them a box collision. I think that they might be having some issues uh, the way some of these... Of course, now everything, now here we go. I was going to say, of course, everything fell just fine. See, some of them have some issues sometimes, and I think it's because they are basically shells. I think if I either make them as solid objects, or if I give them a collision as a solid object, like a box, then that'll be fine. The problem is the corner pieces. You notice how I can walk into the corner. So I need to make sure that the collision for the corner pieces is sort of a L-shaped box kind of thing. So I need to make sure that that's all set up, and then I think it'll work better. But here's our example, and now in order to create some more walls, we can do that just as easily. Let's go up here, we'll grab them, and I'll show you how I did something like this. So let's do Alt and drag to make a copy, and I'll move this up, Alt and drag to make a copy, move this up. Now watch, this is really cool. So let's hit play, let's get these out of the way, and watch this, boom, 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 boom. That's the kind of effect we're going for. So basically we want the whole level here to kind of be built before your eyes and you'll just see everything drop into place and ultimately, unlike this, it will work properly. <laughs> and we're going to have 
So we're gonna have each of these sections and then along the outer wall here, you're not gonna be able to walk off the board because you are basically a game board piece brought to life. So you won't be able to walk off the board. But there will be these little portals where the enemies will start to spawn and come in. So you'll be here going, okay, I gotta take down these enemies and I've got my dice, I can throw at them. And you know, so this first board is all medieval themed. And so that's what we're gonna do for the first one. And so these decorations, um, they're the tables and little cups and dishes and things on them. Those are all decorative, but there will also be objects that you can interact with that are a part of it. Like there'll be doors here. So you have to open the door to go in, grab some loot, do whatever. Uh, for this particular map, the castle, I'm sorry, the um, throne room is going to be over here. So the throne room with the king and he's, you know, he's sick or he's been cursed or something. And so you're going to have to run around and into different rooms to get different resources and things. And then over here, this is going to be like a, a laboratory where you can mix the potion or create the spell or something that, that you can use in order to free him. So you're going to be running around to these different rooms, fighting off enemies as you go, collecting loot, and then you'll be able to go over here and do what you need to do and then go set him free. So that's the idea for our first level. And then each level will take this board and sort of rearrange it. So we're going to have a lot of these decorative pieces dropping in a lot of uh, story elements and a lot of things that we need for the level to work. So we're going to be working on this. So again, any of you guys out there who are physics gurus, please let me know about something like this. Why does this happen sometimes? You can see they're not quite settled now. So I'm having trouble with it a little bit, but the overall idea is pretty cool and I wanted to make sure I shared it with you. And you guys can make your own special examples here. And just a quick note about uh, the tables. I know someone's gonna ask, I wanted to make sure I let them know. The tables themselves, I modeled inside of Maya and they're, like I said, quick and dirty. But the example here is that the collision for this is just a box. So I just chose box collision to let it just kind of generate a quick collision because there's no need to go under the table. So it helps the physics that this is just a, a cube basically, a stretched out, oddly shaped cube. That helps it bounce and settle easier. So I wanted to make sure that that was clear. And then the other thing I wanted to make sure, this here, these guys are actually not static meshes, or they are static mesh, but I just chose the cube that comes default with Unity, I mean with Unreal, pardon me. So I just chose that and then I scaled them down, you can see here 0.29, and then just play with the heights, you know, offset them a little bit, that way this guy will fall first, then this guy, and ultimately I want to do upwards of like three or four layers so you would have maybe like a plate and then like some food on the plate and everything would just kind of bounce and settle, bounce and settle, bounce and settle in order. And it just, it's a really neat effect and it's a super cheap and easy effect. And I, I think that uh, cheap as far as it's not difficult to create, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't take a lot of time or effort, just a lot of math to figure these things out as far as their positioning to make sure that everything uh, sets up properly. And I have a little picture on the other screen that helps me figure out exactly the positions for all of these so that they fall properly within each of the each of the 12 zones here. So, okay, so that's what we got for this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed very much. If you guys have any questions, if any part of this was unclear, please let me know. I wanna make sure that I'm helping you guys out and making sure that it makes sense and that you guys can follow along. I hope that this has helped you very much and you can create some cool effects and send me anything you create, you know, anything that you got dropping into your level. This is really cool if you need like a supply drop, if you're doing like a military type thing and you want to call something in, you just fall from the sky and slam into place and you go over and open it up. And when what one of the things you can do is you can still call the physics sleep and when the physics has slept, like we use for the dice, then you could just swap it out for another model that has animations or something like that so that it would change and the player wouldn't even really notice because it happens in between frames. So, okay guys, thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And as always, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.